The winner of this game wins the entire Global Mushrooms League along with their teammates. We've got Gucci Reza Firuzja playing with white hair and Anish Giri with the black pieces. What do we see on the board? Pony to C3 and we need to start calling this the Van Goat variation. What an overpowered move. Rarely seen at the top level here. Anish responds with Knight F6 and now we get Pawn to D4. Will we see E6 on the board? Well, here's what you've got to consider if it's going to get played. Again, in the course, I have, a, I, have a, I have a saying about this position. So, you know, our opponents play E6. And we don't really know if they are comfortable going into the French. Because some of our opponents might allow us the chance to go for the French. Knowing that we won't go to the French. Because we think that they're comfortable with the French. Meaning that they're going to be more comfortable... The French than we are in the French. However, they can also know that we are comfortable in the French and that we think that they are comfortable in the French, thus making us not go into the French transposition, thus letting them play E6 without actually having proper knowledge of the French. And that's why the court, this course is the greatest of all time. So for that reason, Anish did not play pawn to e6, going back into a French, potentially. He goes pawn d5 here. Now we get bishop f4, the Jababa London, true and proper, on the board. This c prawn advances here. Ali Reza defends his centre, and now we get the captures on d4. Pawn takes back a6, keeps an eye on this knight jump and some nastiness here. Now all the four ponies develop into the game, complete the stable, and now an opening principle is broken. Ali Reza jumps here. Is he a super grandmaster or a very naughty boy? You're not supposed to move the same piece twice in the opening, but it is okay here. He's done his prep with stock squid. Now we see e6, a very solid move, but the bishop on c8 is crying now in this pawn structure. G3 now played, building the old banana hammock. Will we see a rook fianchetto? Bishop d7 played, no. Sanity prevails as the bishop fianchettas onto the diagonal. And now we see takes. Why would you change the structure like this? Kick your own pony, and he's completely forgetting which way his pieces are supposed to move as he sticks them all on the ATM back row. Mum and dad absolutely ashamed. What are you losers still doing here on move 10? But there's a reason, because after h4, securing the bishop, rook c8, taking the half-open file, castles, now we get knight e7. This is the big idea, manoeuvring into one of these two squares. And knight g6, particularly problematic, because it hits the bishop, the pawn on e5. So that's why we see h5, taking that square. h6 in response, not allowing this one to kick on any further. And now knight e2, very very common manoeuvre, excellent horseplay by Ali Reza, and Anish misses the best response here. What should he do? Well, pawn to g5 is best. Yes, you allow white to take on Quasson as the top grandmasters love to do here, but after knight recaptures, we'll look at the pressure you're suddenly exerting on the centre. Black's actually doing quite well, and this one's had its eyes opened, right? And if you don't take like this, but obviously you would, right? And you retreat the bishop back, well now bishop g7, knight c6 on the way, queen c7, huge pressure on the pawn, the knight coming to f5 even potentially as well. So that was the way to go. But knight c6 played, looks really natural, keeping an eye on these squares, but the bishop's crying on d7. Now we see prawn to c3. We get bishop e7 played, and this knight goes on an excellent tour de horse, starting with knight c1, opening the queen also. Castles played, knight d3 and b5 initiates the queenside counterplay. a3 from Ali Reza, a5 played, renewing this threat of b4 here potentially, or a4, clamping. Queen g4 played, very nasty pin here, and so king h8 anticipates this threat of bishop taking an entire pawn. Ali Reza now develops this rook. You want to hold on to this pawn, spearheading the attack, and Anish lashes out here. 
It's very difficult to play, but the way to go according to the stock nest monster is with pawn a4. Make a home for the knight to hop in like this, and it's not necessarily so easy for white to continue this attack. Bishop g5, another defensive idea. But what we see in the game is this pawn to f5 move. Ali Reza, of course, takes on Croissant. He's now a Frenchman, Iranian originally, right? So he loves playing that one. We see the recapture but bishop h3 and he's targeting that backwards weakened e6 pawn and he defends or so he thinks but no this is why Ali Reza sits at home preparing for the game like this. For some reason, an Uno deck scattered across the bathtub here. Many top grandmasters are actually preparing like this now, and they also tend to practice that game face, the kind of creepy chess psycho thing. Really freaks out the opponents and allows them to find moves like this. Rook takes on e6. What a shot giving an exchange, capturing, this is how the line went, this was the actual game, and this is the point. You're getting two pawns for the exchange here, decimating the center, because black can't hold on to the pawn, or bishop c7 comes, and the rook's running out of squares, you know, it has to come, say, here. Now the pawn drops, and white's doing great, two extra pawns, plus this bishop pair, really good position. Stuff like this, also on the way. So we come back here, Anish, correct pushes now with d4 gives back the exchange immediately Ali Reza takes it we see this liquidation in the center the knight hopping forth but now black is a legitimate pawn down knight e2 threatened so Ali Reza goes king g, uh, g2 gets out the forking way now we see rook to d8 played and knight e5 on the board threatens to go to fork Vegas there so what does Anish do well, he chops it off. You know, a stronger move, I think, knight b3 or something like, what, rook d5, says stock lobster, maybe knight c2, but keep it tricky, right? Your material down. And he takes that knight on e5. Now we see bishop recaptures. I cannot get my breath today. Is making me wonder if I'm getting COVID because my in-laws have got COVID or my outlaws, depending how you want to call them. Rook d5 now played, hits the bishop, hits the pawn, and now we see rook e1 covering that one, and knight c6 is Anish's idea. Win back that pawn by force. Now, if you go f4 here, not played, this is the idea. Yes, you give white the passer, but you bring the king over and you get this rook really active. You know, you had to do this to cover here, but now there's the check. You're actually winning back a pawn. This should be a level end game. So this is why no f4, Cemento. Instead, the excellent bishop to c7 played. And now when this pawn drops, you can switch back with rook c1, hit the knight, force it to move, and then pick up the a pawn. Ali Reza still one to the good. And after rook f5, rook c7, rook d5, Geary thrashing, we now see bishop c3. Pawns on both sides, the bishop dominating as the minor piece. Now this king steps to g8, rook b7 comes behind that pawn, so much pressure across the board, and after knight f5, this king starts marching in. The rook anticipates king e4. Now we see g4 kicking away that pony. It sidelines itself, what an absolute wiener schnitzel. And after king g3, g5, Ali Reza gets these ones rumbling. If captures, you lose the pony on the edge of the board. So rook d5 was played instead. f5, rook d3 check. Now the king steps back. And h5, desperate for the passed pawn. What do we see? Rook attacks one more, once more. Retreating. f6 on the board. And Anish Giri resigns the game after just 45 moves because how do you stop this one marching through? You know, say you come back to try and cover the rank, well then there's this check. If the king steps this way, you make a queen like this. I mean, where to go? It's completely cut. If here, now you run into this problem. You just can't escape it all. Say you come like this, where well, you're actually getting mated. Where does the king go? And this is one sample line. Absolutely devastating from Ali Reza, opening with the Van Goat and his team, the Trevaney Continental Kings, I think they're called, they went on to win the whole thing, despite Anish bouncing back and winning the second game, to be fair to him. 
Hope you enjoyed, hope you've enjoyed the whole tournament. Do subscribe if you have, never miss a future video and check out the one on screen for another epic game of chess. Cheers.